This is how to use TikTok Live Studio to stream from your PC to TikTok Live. I'll show you how to set it up, including adding your chat, adding alerts, and adding goals on the screen. We'll also look at how to import your scenes from OBS and Streamlabs. Use the timestamps below to navigate through the video and join my Discord, which is linked in the description, if you need any help. So one of the common questions I get asked is how do I get access to TikTok Live Studio? Unfortunately, we don't really know. All it says here on the website is it's only available for some creators. To see if you have access, simply click the link in the description and see if you can download it and go live with it. Okay, so to get started, we we'll just download it from the link which I put in the description and then just run the installation like you would with any other program. Now that it's installed, we'll make sure Run TikTok Live Studio is ticked and we click Finish. It will take you a few seconds to load, but eventually you'll be given this screen. Obviously, you have to log in to begin, so I'm going to click Log In. It's going to take me to this screen. And very quickly, um, it asks me for permission again from Windows. I'm now logged in, and as we can see, I now need to get on with the setup. So we're going to start with the beginner setup. So let's go through the beginner setup. I'm going to pick my mic, which is my quadcast. Nice and simple. Just press Next. Okay, now I'm going to pick my camera, and this is my lower quality camera because I'm using the main camera for this video. But here's my camera. Just press Next on that now. And now it's asking for the stream settings. And there's a few settings to tweak here, so pay attention to this one. First, I'm going to set to 1080p as long as your PC can handle it. You can see it's suggesting an 8000 bit rate. But I'm going to scroll down here, and we're going to change some of these settings. So I'm going to change the encoder to H.264 NVIDIA. And I'm going to change the encoder shift to high, the color space to 709, and the color range to all. And that should just give us some better looking stream settings. So once I've done that, I'm just going to hit next. And I'm going to go with full screen desktop plus camera. And here we go. As we can see, I've now got my PC screen and it's added my camera down in the corner. As you can see, I can move it around. I can also hold alt to move it around like so. Here's a cool feature you can do with the camera. If I right click the camera, click on settings and then on background, I can click foreground. It's now completely removed my background. If I turn this off again, you can see even though I don't have my green screen covering the whole camera picture, it still removes the background. So this is a really cool feature you can use if you want to remove the background of your camera shot. So now I've got my screen and camera sorted. I could just go live right now, but let me show you a few more things you can do. If I click on add source here, there's a lot of different things I can add here, but I'm going to show you the key ones that you can't get from other platforms like OBS and Streamlabs. Starting with goal here, so you can set a follower goal. So I'm currently on 126,000. Let's say I want to get to 130,000 followers. I just type that in, click on add source, and you can see I now have a follower goal. Let's say I can shrink it a bit. Let's say I want to put it directly beneath me. I now have, for example, a follower goal beneath me. So right now you can only add one goal at a time. If I try and add another goal, I can't add one. If I right click the goal, click on settings, I could change it to gift though. So let's set it, say I want 10,000 coins worth of gifts. Uh, let me apply that one. And now I'm on zero out of 10,000 coins worth of gifts instead. So let's look at the next interesting source, which is the alerts. Uh, this will give you alerts whenever you get new followers and or gifts. You just tick as you like. The alert, you can change the alert duration. I think it's fine left on five seconds. Uh, you can also change the alert photo. So the, the background photo, it can find anything you want from your images and you can change the alert color as well. So if I want it red, I would go FF0000, for example, just click off. It's now red. You can see there's nice red background. There's also an alert sound and you can pick from a number of different sounds. Let's play it. And again, you can pick from the alert sounds. It doesn't look like you can set your own custom alert sound as it stands. You can also just turn the alert sound off if you want and you just hit apply. And now the alert box is here. And obviously it's invisible right now because you're not getting anything, but you can place it wherever you want. A lot of people like to place it in the middle at the top of their screen, but place it wherever you want. Now here's the final interesting source. I'm just going to add another source. I'm now going to add a chat box. So this is going to be my chat. You can only add up to five different chats at a time. You can set it to black or to white. Now you can pick the location at the bottom, although you can move it around anyway. Let's just say we'll put it on the right. You can, set, you can set the messages to disappear automatically. I'm not going to do that. Let's add source. And it's now been added randomly down here. But again, as you can see, you can move it around. You can make it bigger. And again, you can't actually see anything because obviously nobody's chatting right now because we're not live. 
But let me say I want to put it in the bottom right corner. I'll put it down there and we're good to go. So here's one final tweak that I suggest before we go live. We're going to click on audio settings down here. We're going to click on the cog next to our microphone and we're going to enable noise suppression. So most people have a bit of background noise, usually from their PC or some sort of fan in the background. So as long as we enable noise suppression, I'm going to turn it all the way up to high. And this will mean when I am streaming, people can't hear my fan or any other background white noise. So I've hit save. You can do a sound check here if you want as well, but I'm just going to close it. If I stop speaking for a second, it's a bit misleading. Have a look at this bar here. You can see it's still going up and down, but in actual fact, if you run the sound check, you won't be able to hear anything and it has suppressed all your background noise. So of course, not everybody wants to stream in landscape mode. So if you want to stream in portrait mode, just click on landscape scenes at the top, change it to portrait scenes. Now you need to add all your sources again. So I'm going to click on full screen here and just click a display. So for example, if I want to stream in portrait mode, put my gameplay in the middle. Now I'm going to add a source and I'm going to add my camera back in again. So here's my USB live camera. I'm going to click on foreground just to remove the background. And I'm really small right now. So let me just, let's say I want to go up here um, above here. And here I am. And add any more sources you want. Like we just showed, add goals, alerts, chat box, anything else. And that is the portrait mode to go with the landscape mode. Your landscape scenes are still there, as you can see. So you can switch back and forth and you can use either mode. So now we're ready to stream. We just press start. And this is the usual settings for streaming from a PC. Just set your settings. Main ones you have to add which game you're playing. So I'm going to be playing Fortnite, for example. Press confirm. And whenever you're ready, just press go live. And you are now live on TikTok from TikTok Live Studio. Of course, I'm not going to press it, but you will have all of your live chat down here and latest live data up here in the top right corner. Simple as that. That is how to stream using TikTok Live Studio. Make sure you subscribe. We're trying to get to a thousand subscribers to join the YouTube Partner Program and keep watching if you want to learn how to import from Streamlabs or OBS. Okay, so let's look at what happens when I try and import my scenes from another tool. And I think this is going to use OBS. Let me click on it and show you guys what happens. So I just click import. It says it's importing. We don't even know where it's importing from, by the way. And as you can see, whatever it's imported doesn't work. So if you're trying to import OBS scenes, Streamlabs scenes, unfortunately right now it doesn't work. I just suggest you go through the standard setup. Probably best just to uninstall it and reinstall it so it gives you the setup installation again. So this is the third way to set up TikTok Live. You just press go live now. You skip the setup and it just essentially gives you a blank version of Live Studio where you have to add all your own sources and scenes. Personally, even if you are an advanced user, I would go through the basic setup anyway because that's going to easily add your camera and you can easily change your settings during the basic setup anyway. So that is how to set up TikTok Live Studio. Make sure you subscribe. I'm trying to get a thousand subscribers to join the YouTube partner program. And if you need any help, join my Discord, linked in the description. And thanks for watching.